Brody Kostecki. Let's chat about uh, your life and times before you arrived back in Australia to race in supercars. Tell us the story of racing in America. Yeah, it was a very exciting time of my life. Um, I was also very young as well, going over at you know, the age of 12 and um, was quite an experience for me. I uh, moved schools and um, it's, you know, they speak English over there obviously, but it's, yeah, the, the lingos are quite different and the culture's quite quite uh, different to Australia as well. So it was quite a big adjustment for me and I had a lot of fun racing over there and you know, the population over there is, you know, so big. So the racing scene over there is obviously, you know, matches the population to, you know, Australia. So um, I, got, I got to race, you know, pretty much every week of the year at one point um, when I was over there. So I learned so much in the space of, you know, the four years that I was over there. So very thankful to have that opportunity in my life to be able to go do that. Whereabouts did you move to? Uh, I first moved to Sacramento, California, so the capital of California for the first year and I was racing uh, USAC Ford Focus Midgets on um, dirt and pavement, so um, I raced those for a year and then uh, once I completed that, I come back to Australia for about two to three months to work out what we wanted to do from there and um, decided to move to North Carolina, which is the hub of NASCAR there and uh, in the deep south and um, moved there for the remainder of the four years that I was there and raced in the NASCAR late model series and the K&N Pro series and um, yeah, got to race a lot, you know, for the three years that I did that, so that was pretty cool. What was, uh, what was American high school life like? Uh, it's pretty much pretty close to um, what you would see in movies and whatnot, except they kind of miss the metal detectors and stuff when you sort of walk in, so um, it's quite a bit different to Australia. Um, you know, once you go into school, you're pretty much sort of locked in for the whole day, so um, and having police at the school is quite a bit different as well, so um, it was a little bit, I'd say, probably not scary, but um, yeah, it was, it was a bit different at first trying to adjust to the, you know, a different sort of cult, culture and how they sort of teach and st stuff over there, and, um, but uh, yeah, it was definitely quite an experience. <laughs> was it tough to manage school life with the amount of racing that you're doing, being so busy on the weekends? Um, no, actually the teachers over there, I think being, um, I was in the, you know, the city was built around racing, um, so the, the teachers were very um, helpful and I was able to get tutoring and whatnot as well when I was away, because obviously I'd miss, you know, Fridays off of school, sometimes Thursdays, so um, they made it quite easy to make up time and um, so it was, you know, they catered very well for, um, you know, races over there, which was uh, pretty cool to see. Were you the only race car driver at your school? I was about one of about, I reckon, 60, I reckon. So there was um, a, a few of us out there. So we'd go bang doors on Saturday and take each other out and then have to go sit in the same class on, on uh, Monday. So sometimes it was a bit strange, but <laughs> yeah, it was uh, pretty cool. Wow, that's totally different to what it would be like here in Australia, because you can pick any school, you'd be the only race car driver in your class. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just the fact that, um, you know, where I sort of lived uh, in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina, there's, you know, it's the hub of NASCAR. so pretty much 90% of the teams are located there so um, it's where you have to sort of be to you know if you want to have a career in NASCAR that's you know where you have to live so um, there was a lot of people trying to do what I was trying to do um, as well so obviously um, yeah the few schools that were around the area they were all um, populated with races. Did you do much dirt racing? I did when I first moved to Sacramento um, when I raced in the USAC series so uh, I raced Ford Focus Midgets on I started out on pavement and um, I was chasing the national championship against uh, Cole Custer, who races for uh, Stuart Haas now in the uh, NASCAR Cup Series. So um, he was um, he was racing around a lot at the time, and um, he went to dirt to try um, get in front of me in the points. So it was uh, how that used to work: was you do 25 races and your best uh, 25 finishes. Um, accumulate your points so he started racing a lot more than I did so I had to do the same thing to try you know go for the national championship so it was pretty cool to steal that from him um, at the time which was cool and um, yeah so I had to experience the dirt side of things which I absolutely loved and that's you know something that I've always said that I want to do again. Does it, has the time on dirt helped your skills in the wet weather you reckon? Yeah definitely um, I've always been pretty good in the wet um, you know back from my karting days I was always you know, very competitive in the wet and um, won a lot of races in the wet. And I sort of took to the dirt um, pretty much straight away. So it um, didn't take me too long to sort of understand, you know, the basic fundamentals. Um, I was by means no no expert at it, but um, you know, the basic fundamentals I seemed to get pretty quickly. And 
Um, I think it was just because I, you know, enjoyed it so much and being on the edge of, you know, I guess crashing and trying to produce lap time, it's a little bit different than, you know, racing in the dry. So I think that's the, the part that I love the most is just the risk uh, versus reward part. You made it all the way up to the k &N Pro Series, which is a pretty big feeder category, sort of like Super 2 or Super 3, I guess you'd call it, to, to get the supercars here. What was that year like? Because you got to run against some pretty fast guys like Cole Custer and at some really cool tracks. Yeah, I did. It was, um, it was quite a bit different to what I was racing at the time. Um, you know, the cars were six, 700 horsepower, so pretty similar to what we have now in V8 supercars. And yeah, I did one race in 2013. We bought a second-hand Hendrick car that, you know, raced about four or five years earlier um, in the Xfinity series now. Um, so we bought one of those and it was always a family team. So we did everything ourselves. So that was um, quite a battle. Uh, in itself. Had my first K&N race in 2013 and was running seventh at the time and we had a tire, tire failure about um, a quarter away from the end so that was pretty cool to see that you know us as a family could go out and compete with you know some of the you know the top tier teams like Joe Gibbs and um, I think uh, Richard Childress were in at the time. Um, uh, Cole Custer was racing with um, you know Stuart Haas support which was pretty cool to see so um, it was definitely pretty challenging at the time and it, it's like you said, it's very similar to um, what, what Super 2 is today. So um, yeah, being able to go do that and um, you know, race at such a high level at such a young age at you know, 14, 15, 16 years old was you know, I think something that primed me for um, you know, where I am today. What was it like racing at those big tracks? Yeah, I think it was, um, I think uh, Bristol was probably the most eye-opening track that I went to. It was definitely not the biggest, but um, it was definitely the fastest place that I'd been to. It was so small and so high banked. Um, I remember first walking into the place and not being able to crawl up the banking. It was that steep, so um, and just going into the corner and you know forcing yourself to hold it wide open for qualifying and just it just made me sick in my stomach. So that's something that I'll never forget. And some of the other big tracks that I went to, like uh, Dover and Iowa. Got to race at Watkins Glen too, which was really cool. You're known for your aggression here in Australia and not being a rookie who's easily pushed around. Do you reckon a bit of that comes from your NASCAR days? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, I think it was just the mentality um, over there is, you know, uh, supercars has a you know 24, 25 car grid or whatnot, um, give or take a few. And, you know, NASCAR is pretty much the same sort of deal as well. So, you know, there's, you know, might be a 40 car grid, but um, the population is so much larger than Australia and you know the grid size is relatively the same so there's so many people going for seats over there and um, I think it just brings the intensity up a bit um, over there and um, you know people race for a living over there um, not just at the top tier but even you know at some of the lower divisions you know they race for prize money and that's how they you know put food on the table for that week so um, you can imagine you know when you're coming from another country and um, you're trying to make a name for yourself and you know you're trying to um, you know, win races, um, it sort of wasn't taken nicely at times. So I had to learn to be aggressive and, you know, I, I grew up really fast at, you know, 13, 14 years old and had to, had to, you know, become a man, so to speak, and <laughs> got into a few fights and whatnot over there um, after races. So um, I think, yeah, that's definitely where the aggression comes from. But I've always, you know, been fair throughout my racing. Um, you know, I'll never take someone out on purpose if I, um, you know, if they have done something, you know, relatively stupid to me. So, um, you know, that was back over in the States. But yeah, it's, I, I think that's where most of that comes from. Can you share a little bit of a story about one night that someone may have been a bit angry at you or you got yourself into one of those dust ups you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, I think it was uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, the Myrtle Beach 400 back in 2013. Um, it's a very big NASCAR late model race over there, very prestigious. It's, you know, where um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and a few others um, you know, I think they started their racing career there, so it's quite a big race to win. And there's, you know, A, B, and C features. So, you know, sometimes if you don't have, if you don't qualify well and you don't go well through your heat races, you have to race your way in. So, um, unfortunately, I wasn't having too great of a weekend there. Um, it didn't qualify too well, but we got the car sort of sorted out for the, um, you know, by the time the racing came and. Um, I sort of had a bit of a rival with a competitor throughout the year in another category um, and uh, we were fighting for wins a lot um, in a national category over there at the time and um, we may or may not have got into a scrap for the last place going into the eighth feature and um, yeah, he sort of tried to put me into the pit road tyre barriers so I kind of just drove straight and um, 
uh, just put him in the fence really. Um, so, and then um, that turned into a bit of a fist fight afterwards and um, cars got smashed overnight and my car had holes drilled through the drill, uh, holes drilled through the fuel tank and um, the bonnet smashed in. So um, he, he got suspended for a while and um, I, I got a slap on the wrist for the on-track incident. So um, yeah, like I said, the, the culture and aggression over there is um, quite a lot different than it is in Australia. Wow, there you go, that's cool. Thanks for that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, sadly, it came to an end. Uh, off the back of a top five, I think, at Dover, which is a shame. What was it like when, when it was time to come home? Yeah, it was sort of, um, it was a bit unexpected at the time. Um, unfortunately, some family circumstances sort of cut the, cut the journey short, but, um, you know, you've just got to learn throughout life that, you know, you've just always got to push on. And, um, you know, I look back now and um, I'm just very thankful to even have the opportunity, um, you know, going over there and racing a full bodied car, you know, um, five, 600 horsepower at, you know, 12, 13 years old just sounds absolutely outrageous here in Australia. So um, I was able to get that experience at such a young age. And I think that's, you know, benefited me so much coming back here into um, supercars, super two and um, yeah, so, yeah, definitely very thankful to have the opportunity and I'm um, just so excited to um, go back racing again here in Australia. Have you got unfinished business there? I think I do, yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely like to go do some races over there, but um, I love supercars and the competition here is just absolutely insane. So um, yeah, this is definitely my home and um, yeah, just can't wait to go racing again. Cool to chat, man. Uh, I'm never ever gonna try and race you for that last transfer spot. <laughs> Sounds good. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> On your buddy. Cheers.